I'm recording this the night before and uploading it in the morning, so apologies if I miss any little details with this. I wanted to wait till we got a bit more information about it, because David Pagnota of the Fourth Period was the first to report on it, but soon after, Saravalli came out and said that the decision is coming soon for Corey Perry, but nothing is done yet between him and the Oilers. This is key, though. He then followed that up by saying if it is Edmonton, you could see him in their lineup as soon as this week. There have been rumors about Perry and Edmonton for a while now, so I'm sure it's been trending there for a little bit, but I wonder if that Hockey Night in Canada, Battle of Alberta, grindy win by the Oilers, or McDavid and Drysaddle both had zero points, and they still got their 13th straight win, most ever by a Canadian-based team. I wonder if that was the last straw for him, where it was like, yeah, I need to be part of this team. Look, I was one of those people that fell for the, oh, Shohei Otani's on the plane to Toronto when he's signing with the Blue Jays thing. So since then, I'm just pretty skeptical until we get multiple confirmations. So in Chris Johnston and Ryan Rashog, especially Ryan Rashog, who's like the boots on the ground TSN reporter for the Oilers, confirmed this. That's when I was like, all right, Perry's an Oiler. The first question that popped into my head was about the salary cap. Obviously, Perry's going to get a pretty much league minimum prorated salary, and it's going to have performance bonuses, so the exact salary number doesn't really matter. But even with that, you look on cap friendly, the Oilers have under 150 grand in projected cap space and a little under 316 in current space. So even if Perry were to accept payment for this contract in Monopoly money, the Oilers would still have to make a move to make this work. My guess is they'll send somebody down like Adam Ernie or Phil Camp or both. Connor Brown could also be an option there, so we'll see what they end up doing. My other big question, and this is the juicy one. What number is he going to wear? Because Derek Ryan has 10 and he's not wearing Ryan Smith's 94. Just kidding. The actual big question is, where does he fit in the lineup? Obviously, you're not touching the Nugent Hopkins, McDavid, Hyman line. I personally wouldn't touch the Kane, Drysaddle, Fogel line right now either. I know Yanmark's a left shot and Perry's a right shot, but I do think that Perry'd fit in pretty good with Ryan McLeod and Derek Ryan on a third line there to start at least. And he's a net front guy on the power play, but no chance he's taking Zach Hyman's spot there. So he could start as net front on PP2. And I don't think this is going to happen, but if for some reason the first power play unit got stale, you could put Perry up there for an audition. And look, call me crazy, but from a purely on-ice perspective, I still think he can hold his own in a middle six role, especially on that third line. I think that's the sweet spot for him. Man, Perry, Evander Kane, Darnell Nurse, and Matias Ekholm, that's a tough team to mess with, especially come playoff time. Speaking of which, yes, this year off the ice, Corey Perry's publicly had some struggles, but on the ice, when he's on like he has been in the past few playoffs, he is absolutely a difference maker in a seven-game series. He's not going to be your leading scorer or anything, but he might be the guy who gives you that big goal in a really tight game in the playoffs. This isn't me coming out and saying this is an awesome signing, great job Oilers. I just think that on the ice he can still bring you some value and if the whole situation didn't happen with Chicago, I definitely think they would have traded him at the deadline to a contender and there would have been a lot of teams interested. Saravalli even mentioned some of them like Tampa, the Rangers, the Panthers, and others. As a player, clearly plenty of teams still saw great value in him despite what's transpired this year. I think he's going to take on a similar role as the one he had in Tampa or even the one he had in Montreal. I know Nick Suzuki and Cole Caulfield really emerged to be one of the biggest key players for that team, but it was still mostly a veteran team. I mean, you had Carey Price, Shea Weber, Tyler Toffoli, Brendan Gallagher, Jeff Petrie, Eric Stahl, Philip Dano, and of course Perry. But the Oilers are a very veteran team with playoff experience. They're just looking to get to the next level, take that next step, and that's where Perry comes in. Either that or it's going to be a complete disaster. Let me know your thoughts in the comments, what you think it's going to be. If you want more Oilers content, you know what to do. Like the video, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you in the next one. You're awesome.